I went all the way through high school at Topeka High and never took a math class. And by the time I was a senior, they realized the counselor had never checked to see why my schedule wasn't filled with appropriate classes. That said something too about how the counselors at Topeka High served students of color, which was not good at that time. In my senior year, there were a group of students who had had experiences similar to mine, in which it seemed that students of color were overlooked in many areas, especially academics. If you didn't have extremely vocal parents or um, high-profile parents, you may not have had conversations with counselors about opportunities for college and beyond. I remembered her saying that I wasn't college material, and that I should plan to go to some type of a business school and become a secretary because that was all I could hope to achieve. And I didn't argue, but I questioned it because I thought, why couldn't I go to college if I wanted to? But after she told me that, really, I kind of took that to heart and said, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do, even though I knew I loved English and I loved teaching. Um, I found out later many of my friends had had the same conversation with the same counselor. But I will say, when I earned my doctorate degree, I wished she would have been alive <laughs> so that I could take it and sit down and show it to her and say, do you remember me? I'm the little brown girl that you suggested wasn't college material. There were other issues. Um, there wasn't representation in student royalty, prom king, queen. There were not black candidates for that. There was no representation in student government. There was no representation in other areas like cheerleading. And so they tried passive ways of attempting to bring it to administration's attention, and it was apparent that they weren't listening. So one morning I showed up for school, and I saw quite a few of my friends out on the lawn at Topeka High, and I was going like, oh, what's going on? Because I knew it was close to time for school to be starting. And uh, Lance Murphy and Haran Hamoud, I believe, and a couple others were standing, and some other students were gathered around them, and they said, oh, they're getting ready to walk out of school. So I went over there to find out what was going on. They had a manifesto, and as they were listing the reasons, I could totally understand, but I was a little afraid that if I didn't go on into school, I'd be in trouble. So I recall calling my mother, and she said that was fine because they were going to march over to the Board of Education. And so around about maybe 8.30, we marched over there. We had a black security guard at the time, Mr. Dillard, and rather than force the kids to go in the building, he went with us. And we presented the manifesto to the board and didn't hear a response, but they told us we had to go back to school. Well, by this time, other parents had heard about it. And so some parents and retired educators went to Lane Chapel and they opened up the church and they set up programs so that they could do things like routine math, <laughs> <laughs> education and English, just an effort to show that they were going to help kids uh, stay on track. I can't recall exactly how many days we were out, but it was at least four or so. And eventually the board did hear and they promised to make changes for the next school year. And the next school year, your grandpa was president of the student body.